Hey, this is Shane from Performance EV. Welcome to the channel. Today we're continuing on in our Nissan Leaf Drive Unit series and we're going to look at pre-charged circuits. So join us while we put one together. Today we're going to look at the pre-charged circuit that we're building for the inverter here. Um, this stuff usually comes with the battery packs if you're buying like a Nissan Leaf battery pack or a Chevy Volt or Renault Zoe, whatever, um, they'll have the pre-charged circuit frequently built into the battery pack itself. Don't have one of those yet and we're going to do a lot of the bench testing on this with much lower voltages. So I'm going to build out a pre-charged circuit that I can use with the batteries I've got. Um, as you saw in the last video, we scavenged some of the components from the inverter, from the or from the inverter loom, from the our delivery module to use for this. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to take you through what I was doing, uh, what the how the circuit works, uh, what we've got going on, um, and we'll see where we get to from there. All right, so we've got the inverter here, which is what we're ultimately going to try and get the power to, um, and then we've got the components that will make up the pre-charged circuit. So it's going to be the circuit here, battery, obviously much smaller than you would <laughs> expect to find powering a uh, an electric vehicle. So first off, just want to go through what the purpose of the pre-charge circuit is. So the inverter itself, a large or a lot physically large component of it is the capacitor here. And this takes the current coming from the battery and basically just helps to make sure that it's running through into the IGBTs in a very consistent, even matter, manner. There's no spikes or anything like that. Um, so the power going to the motor is nice and smooth. Now, the capacitor, any capacitor, if you were to just quickly introduce power to it, it's basically seen as a short on the circuit. And this means that um, there'll be a huge inrush of power to it uh, the moment you switch on the, um, the voltage going to it. That is not an ideal situation. So if you've ever gone onto YouTube and watched uh, videos of people filming capacitors exploding, you, usually it's the small ones, but that's what happens. Obviously this one's much bigger. Um, a, it would do more damage uh, if that happens, but B, also it's going to cost more if you have to rebuild your um, this part of the, the drive system. So we want to avoid that. So the purpose of the uh, pre-charge circuit is basically to slow down that inrush of current. Um, in order to make sure that the capacitor survives being switched on. So what we've got is essentially a resistor which sits um, alongside the two contactors or high voltage relays that are being used to control whether or not the power is going into the, the system. And before the positive power goes through the um, high voltage relay, it's routed through this resistor to bring the capacitor up to about 95% of the pack voltage. And then the um, normal high voltage relay can be switched on and the pre-charged circuit will normally be turned off just to save the, um, the relay that's used to switch it on from you know, being overused and, and ending itself prematurely. So I've wired up a couple of bits of it. We've got our negative, um, we've got a positive, and then we have another positive for the, the pre-charge resistor. Uh, so obviously these wires are way thinner than we expect to see when using pack voltage, but I'm only going to be putting you know a few volts through these initially just to, to test everything, and we'll gradually start using thicker and thicker wire. So I'm going to finish wiring this up, um, and yeah, then show you the, the rest of the components. screwed up on my ordering um, and basically did not get enough 
uh, spade connectors. So for this initial test, I'm going to be totally dodgy and just crush the wires underneath the underneath the screws. Um, don't do this at home. pre-charged circuit built but now we need to be able to control it so these are relays they need power sent to them positive and negative um, 12 volts to actually close the circuit and start sending the power through be it through the high voltage relays or through the pre-charge relay to get it going through the resistor um, the other thing we also need to be able to do is send 12 volts into the inverter itself. Um, so we could do this manually, we could have a bunch of switches and, and go through it, but that's not really that's not really a long-term solution. Um, so what we've got here is a software controlled four relay uh, board. Um, so each of these can take can carry up to I think it's 30 volts DC, we only need to carry through 12 to each of these units and to the inverter itself. So we'll um, start to get that hooked up. Alright, so we've got six outputs coming from this um, 5 volt positive and ground and then four signals coming from uh, four of the digital connections and then on this so it's ground all the connections and then the 5 volt in all right so that's in theory our circuit hooked up entirely possible that I've uh, messed something up so let's test it for that we're going to need to get the laptop out So we're going to upload some code to the Nano. All it's going to do is switch on and, and off each of the relays in succession uh, with a, a few second delay. Bit of a loop here but there we go each of the relays switching on and off again and if we cut the power they all switch off Okay, so now what we're going to try and do is actually control, have the fact that these are switched on, control these three units. I've taped off the um, ground that would be connected to the inverter, and there's nothing coming out of the, um, the relay that would switch that on. There's no power going in through any of these, so no, no voltage, so nothing's going, actually going to go to the faster or through the resistor. This is purely to test the relays. So, this is our positive, this is our ground. I 
Okay, so now we've got the power wired up to go through the relays to control each of these units. Um, might not be able to hear it on the video, but we'll see. Once the code reaches the right point to switch on each of these units in succession, that will then feed the 12 volt signal into each of these units and we'll switch them on. Um, it'll be pretty much instantaneous, it'll just be a louder click than the first one. The first one isn't actually controlling anything because that's ultimately going to get wired to the inverter. So we just have to wait for the uh, few seconds to pass. So I don't know if you heard it, but that was a very successful test actually. Um, as the power went through each of these in succession, we had slightly different behavior. So first one, the relay here clicked on, but nothing else happened because there's no actual output from it. Uh, as I say, that will be going to the inverter. Next one clicked on, that one was connected to the negative here, and that fired that one. You could hear a much deeper um, sound coming from that relay. Next one switched on the pre-charge circuit and then the final one switched on the uh, positive. Obviously we'll have more complex um, logic in place to actually control it so what will happen is the 12 volts will be sent, sent to the inverter and then after a very short delay the negative will be switched on followed very quickly by the pre-charge circuit We'll then look to receive a signal back from the unit here um, over the can to see what voltage the capacitor is at. Once the capacitor reaches 95% of the battery voltage, we will then switch on the positive and switch off the pre-charge circuit. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, we now have a pre-charge circuit that works um, as we iterate through the different testing that we'll be doing on this unit. Um, obviously we'll be replacing and updating things like the wires that are going between the various components um, as well as the software that controls the, um, the pre-charge circuit. Uh, once I've gotten the software properly written I'll throw it up on GitHub and I'll include a link in the description of whatever video I, I reveal that in. Um, but apart from that I really would say I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please subscribe and like, uh, leave any comments on things that you want to see. And um, yeah, please share this with, with other people that you know who might be interested in it. So thanks.